Tatum O'Neill won hearts and an Oscar for her childhood performance in the movie Paper Moon. A mixed blessing at best, as O'Neill tells Tracy Smith in our Sunday profile. She was a child star in every sense. Tatum O'Neill was only nine when cameras rolled for 1973's Paper Moon, but she stole nearly every scene. If you don't give me my $200, I'm gonna tell a policeman how you got and he'll make you give it to me because it's mine. But I don't have it. Then get it. Playing opposite her dad, superstar Ryan O'Neill, and directed by Peter Bogdanovich, it was Tatum's first ever film, and it wasn't easy for her or anyone else on the set. I, I don't want you smoking in the car tomorrow. What? I didn't say nothing. I'm just listening to you. A lot of those takes took 40 takes. Um, 40. Oh, yeah. I didn't really read very well during the film. You gotta go through third eye through all the Murray and Lucas huh? to find get the double ground. Oh, those are pretty good towns in there. We could do some business in there. And everybody hated me. It's not fair. Everybody hated you? Pretty much, yeah. On set? Yeah. Until they saw, like, what they had, and then they were like, oh, now we love her. And at the Oscars in 1974, the Academy loved her, too. The winner is... Tatum O'Neill. Did you have any idea what a big deal it was winning that Oscar at no. age 10? No. No idea. Still, she was pretty poised for a 10-year-old, and her acceptance speech was an example of brevity that winners tonight could probably learn from. All I really want to thank is my director, Peter Bogdanovich, and my father. Thank you. Her next film was nearly as big as an ace little leaguer opposite the great Walter Matthau. I'm a bum. No, you're not. You taught me how to pitch. You taught me how to... Ah, pitch. Damn it! Can't you get it through your thick head that I don't want your company? If I... And there were other roles after this, but perhaps none equal to the promise of her first film. What does it do if you start your career, first movie you're in, boom? I think it really screws you up. Case in point. I think I would work consistently, but I suck at auditioning. So the fact that, like, I can't get myself a job because I can't The fact that I can't get a job because I can't, like, audition properly is, is funny to me. So you've worked on this auditioning thing because you didn't have to audition coming out of the Correct. gate. Correct, yes. You sort of want me, don't you? Of course, she still found other work and time to play. As a teenager, she was seen at all the right places with other famous faces. You know, you dated Michael Jackson, you're partying at Studio 54, you're hanging out with Cher. Yeah, I was an adult. I didn't see a problem with it. <laughs> it was just when they had to get a crane to get me out of Cher's house. Oh, because, wow. well, because she had like a really amazing family. Like, she had her mom and her sisters and all these amazing women. And I'm like, wait, there's no women at my house. Well, there are, but they come and they go <laughs> every day. Dad's girlfriends so, kind of coming and going. Uh, if you want to you want to call them that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Cher was like stability for you? Totally. But the instability in her life took a toll, professionally and personally. Tatum O'Neill has always been remarkably open about her struggles with addiction and her bitter divorce from tennis great John McEnroe, with whom she has three kids, Kevin, Emily, and Sean. But now, at 56, she says her biggest challenge ever is her latest one, rheumatoid arthritis, a disorder that can make every move a painful struggle. What does that mean for your that, daily life? That means that my hands stopped working. It means that... I mean, I can't tie my shoes. I have to relearn to write, and I definitely need surgery on my, my left knee and my neck coming up in the next uh, week. And through it all, she says her daughter, actress Emily McEnroe, has been her rock. My mom is incredibly loving. She's childlike and always has been just uh, bright. My mom lights up every room that she enters, and that's Aww. true. 
I don't know why you're embarrassed. No, that's such a sweet thing to say, and that's I'm not true. embarrassed. I'm actually very, that's a nice and thing to say. By the way, Tatum says that she and Emily's dad are on good terms now, and that having her three children may have saved her life. I was, I was uh, really ready to kind of fall down and, and not get back up. I was not myself. I was at 22, and, and then the kids gave me a kind of a real reason to keep going and, and fight, and, and still the happiest times of my life were the times that I, that I was married, funny enough. So sometimes we think we're making the right decision, and maybe we aren't, and I have to live with that too. What do you mean, what decision? Well, to leave my marriage. That maybe looking back it wasn't the right decision? Perhaps not. I was loved, I was cared for, I was, um, that's it. That's, that's what one wants, isn't it, in a marriage? I've never met anyone who even comes close to my ex-husband. I, I, he's happier and I'm happy for him and that makes me happy, so. Her relationship with her father seems a bit more strained these days. They teamed up for a reality TV show in 2011, but since then it's been, well, complicated. Would I love if my dad and I were closer? There are no words. He was the first love of my life, but sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to, and. I can love unconditionally without reciprocal. And I think my dad does love me, so that's what I, I tend to believe, even though we don't talk as often as I would like or see each other as often as I would like. And you can bet that Tatum O'Neill will keep trying with the same grit that she showed on screen 40 years ago. Keep your sunny side up. and the belief that there are bigger prizes still to come. Do you dream of winning another Oscar? No. No? No, because that's not why I'm in it. Would I like that, I guess? For me, the biggest achievement would be that I, that I did the best audition that I could do, that I got the role that I really wanted, and that I'm self-supporting through my own contributions. How do you see your future? I think the best years are still ahead of me. How about that? I do.